Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. It's so good to see you. If uh, you didn't get the chance to see our Christmas Eve service, you can watch that uh, online, whether our whether it be on our Facebook page or uh, on our website, you're certainly able to see the archive of our Christmas Eve services. Well, glad that you're here with us. Uh, as, we, as we begin, just want to make sure everybody did receive the little communion cups, which are right out here on the table. We will be taking communion in just a little bit, so if you have not already, be sure to pick up a communion cup just as you walk in here. And then on the seat back in front of you, we have welcome cards. And so if you're new, visiting, uh, if you have a prayer request, if you have a address update, anything like that, please, please, please grab one of those welcome cards and fill it out and then drop it in the offering. And if you haven't seen it already, we have a new offering basket. Just look right over here. We have a new offering basket. So uh, this little box hanging on the wall, which I think looks pretty good. And I apologize, those of you online can't see it, but it's a beautiful wooden box. Uh, that's going to be our uh, new offering basket for the time being, um, just a safer, less contact way than, you know, passing the plate. So uh, please, if you do have a financial gift, an offering, a welcome card, please, please, please just drop it in the wooden basket. Uh, and those of you online, as always, you can mail checks, you can give online. We have a drop box in our parking lot, our mailbox. Uh, you can drop things off there. So we just want to thank everybody for the continued uh, financial and prayer support of Mosaic Church. All right, so I'm going to read our mission statement as we begin. Mosaic Church is a Christian family committed, committed to moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know if we still have the slide for that, but uh, we are a church, we are a Christian family who is committed to moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we're here as the church. And that is our mission for the Florence community, the Anthem community, for our neighbors right here. We want to see people find Jesus. And as we enter into 2021, I'm so excited to embark on that journey once again with you all. Well, just a big, uh, a big update. Uh, I should say, so pay attention. We are going to, unfortunately, be postponing for just a couple weeks, postponing the start of our high-risk service. We were planning to start that next Sunday, but we're going to need to postpone it. We are in the process of moving service times, changing service times, and so uh, be on the lookout for an update on that. But the tentative plan is January 17th. Uh, we will have two services with new service times, and we will give you plenty of notice. Probably this week we will start advertising uh, those times, and I, I don't have them official yet, but we will advertise those very soon and give you plenty of notice. So that tentative start date as we break off into two services uh, will be January 17th, with one of those services being our high-risk service. Uh, I know many people... Um, uh, would fall into that high-risk category and would prefer a, a place where masks are required and social distancing, and we're going to have a reduced worship team. And that will be for uh, just one of our services. And then the other service will be kind of like what we're doing already, exactly like what we're doing already. So, But the times will be changing. The service times will be changing. So we wanted to give everyone plenty of notice, and so that's why uh, we made the decision to postpone just a couple more weeks the start of our high-risk service. So uh, I do apologize. I know many of you were looking forward to that starting next Sunday, just a couple more weeks, and we will all be together uh, worshiping in person very soon. So be on the lookout for that. All right, we have a Bible reading plan, a brand new Bible reading plan. Read the New Testament in one year. Could we do it, you think? We did. We did last year. We did the whole Bible, and uh, we're hoping with just the New Testament here, we can be more focused on the New Testament. And also, I think it really, um, and you can read the whole Bible if you want. There's no reason you need to stop with just the New Testament. But maybe just the shorter readings will motivate more people to participate and power through. I know when you, when you do the normal Bible reading plan, you miss a week. You ever been there? You miss a day. You miss three days. And it's like there's so many chapters you have to catch up. 
So, you know, don't feel like you have to read every single chapter if you do miss some days, but this certainly makes it uh, a little bit easier in that way. Um, and so instead of doing the whole Bible in a year like we did last year, we're going to do, um, or I should say this year, it's still 2020, uh, we're going to be doing the New Testament for 2021. So if you, uh, as you came in, you should have seen these, uh, these awesome new bulletins that Carla put together for us. Thank you, Carla. Uh, yes, give her a hand. Because I think they look really good. They have uh, all of our contact information in here, a lot of different uh, things. The only thing you would need to know is the uh, we did we did move we did postpone the high risk service time and so by the time these were made uh, it had already it had already been postponed so just disregard that but otherwise uh, very a lot of information in here everyone's contact information but also the Bible reading plan is in here so be sure to uh, to check that out. All right, I just want to thank everybody for uh, donating towards our new parking lights. We asked several people if they would just pitch in a $100 donation to help us achieve those new parking lot lights, and we're almost there. We're almost there. We just need a couple more donations, um, but we're very close. We're probably 80% of the way there. Uh, we should have our new lights installed in the next couple weeks, and that will uh, make the world a little brighter. I like that. I like that. At least it'll make our parking lot a little brighter, and that'll be a good thing. They're solar powered. They're uh, like three times brighter than the ones we have, at least maybe more than that. Uh, but so they're yeah. So we're thankful for those. And then the other thing, and then we'll worship. I promise. The other thing is, as we enter 2021, uh, the church board has approved uh, to finish to complete our church kitchen. And if you don't know our church kitchen, yes, that's exciting. This building, uh, it, I think that'll be the last thing we need to complete on this building is our church kitchen. So it'll, uh, we'll have a microwave, a stove, a sink, all sorts of things. And that'll help us reach our community in new and exciting ways. It'll help with church events, all sorts of stuff. But uh, we are looking to raise $3,000 to complete that. And we've had a few folks in our church who have generously agreed to provide the labor and to do all of, the, all of the work, we just need the cost of materials. $3,000, so this could be a good year-end giving opportunity. Uh, but as we enter into 2021, we're hoping that uh, we can raise that money very quickly and get our new kitchen completed. So that will be exciting. All right, as always, please check the website for more info. All of our information is at mosaicnazarene.org, including a church calendar and all of our uh, service Worship services, the archives of those are on our website. So basically, anything you need to know, any announcements that you missed, anything you can't remember, just go to our website. It's all right there. Uh, I hope you each had a very Merry Christmas. Welcome. Let's worship our risen Lord and Savior this morning. Would you stand with us as we sing Joy to the World with the Tack On Chorus of Unspeakable Joy. Let's sing together.
noticing as we had our Christmas Eve service, Bonnie was singing this, the song Breath of Heaven, and the wise men came in, and there was a reverent awe in their faces. They were overwhelmed to be in the presence of the newborn king. Whether they understood all of what that meant or not, I doubt. But they knew they were in the presence of, of a very special king, King Jesus. And to think of what he did when he came to earth, the one who spoke the world into existence, reduced himself to the finite body of a tiny, helpless babe, one that could not even feed himself, had to depend on a young teenage mother for his care and nourishment and a young father for his, his protection and provision. It's amazing what God did when he reduced himself to come as a child. But you know, that child grew and became a man, King Jesus. And it says one of these days, he'll be the king of the heavenly armies returning to the earth. So when we sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, we're singing about God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit all at once, and we're celebrating who he is. Let's sing again. Holy, 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 all the saints. trusting in the Lord with all my heart recently that I was blessed this Christmas. And if you don't know my story, um, I was blessed to have my wife with me and my four little boys. And that is, uh, that's a big deal in my household. So I uh, wanted to share that with you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight.
Love and trust in God. 
that is a truth we can carry with us through 2021. God is right here next to us. He will never, ever leave our side. Regardless of what we might be going through, He will never leave our side. Let that promise, let that truth reign with you today and reign with you into the new year. Well, at this time, I'd invite you to take communion with us together. And uh, those of you joining us online, feel free to... Uh, Get a piece of bread and a cup of juice, and you can join right along with us uh, with communion. Uh, but before we do that, let me pray for us. Father, we bow before you this morning. God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for everything you've uh, blessed us with uh, this year amidst the crazy year. We thank you for your blessings, God. And most importantly, we thank you for never leaving our side. We faced 2020 and all of the stuff this year, which impacted many of us in so many different ways, God, but you have never left our side, and so we remain confident that throughout this next year, you will never leave our side, Father. We pray for those in our church who are sick, who are in the hospital, who are hurting in one way or another this morning, God. We pray for them. We pray that your peace and joy would surround them. We pray that they'd feel your presence today, God. We pray for Mosaic Church that you and only you would lead us throughout 2021, God. We have a, a great year in front of us, God, with lots of opportunity to reach people, uh, to be a part of your mission in this community, God. Get us excited, get us motivated, get us ready for the things that you want to do through us here at Mosaic Church. We're so excited, Lord. We bow before you in worship this morning. Give us a heart of repentance. Give us a heart of worship as we enter into communion, as we remember the incredible life-changing sacrifice that you gave us on the cross, Father. May we never forget. May we always remember. And as we celebrate communion, God, may we be filled with your Spirit, Lord, and remember what you've done for us. God, give us a heart of repentance this morning. Work in our lives today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Bible tells us that while the disciples were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ, broken for us. Then Jesus took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ poured out for us. As we gather today, as we enter into a new year, may we never forget the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and the new life and the forgiveness that is given to us. Let's worship.
with a grateful heart, with a song, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank.
Good morning, Mosaic family. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Shelly and I were blessed with uh, several of our kids. Our grandson was there. And I think everybody was blessed with a large amount of uh, gifts. It's a big deal with Shelly. Let's pray. Father, I come before you this morning, and I ask that you would fill me with your spirit, Lord, and help me to speak the words that you would have me to speak. We thank you for all the gifts that you've given us this year, the gifts you've given us in the past year, and the gifts that you've continued to give us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Join with me in reading Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and to rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus, to the Lord, as the law required. Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation. which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people, Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what, he was, what was being said about him. There's two more verses. There's two more verses. Oh, they're not coming up. Okay, okay. Well, families, Christmas Day is over. The last minute shopping is finished, or goodness, I hope so. And all the gifts are open, and we are gathered here this Sunday morning, just two days after Christmas. We're celebrating together. However, today, I don't want to talk about Christmas 2020. Let us think about that Christmas 2,000 years ago. Luke provides a picture here where he captures not only the exaltation of the Lord's birth in a stable, but he continues to follow the story as Joseph, in adherence to local custom and law, relocates Mary and the child to the city of David, Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. It is here in Jerusalem that de Luke details the mysterium tremendum. It's a big Latin word. I was quite impressed with it. Meaning awe-inspiring mystery. The mysterious hand of God is moved to fulfill once and again the Old Testament prophecy concerning the arrival of the Messiah. And this is the subject of my lesson this morning. Allow me to introduce to each of you a man the Bible calls Simeon. If there was ever a man who could exemplify waiting on God, it was Simeon. Simeon was a temple priest. In fact, history says that he was a high priest, which meant he had the privilege of entering the Holy of Holies. He was said to be a devout man. It is said that he was a priest for over 40 years. He waited on the Lord, and he lived at the end of what is called the intertestamental period. My wife and I had a little joke over this last night. She couldn't say it, and we kept laughing over it. This is the 400 years between the last words of the Old Testament to the opening of the New Testament. During this period, the Jewish people had suffered at the hands of the Syrians, the Romans, and the political aspirations of the Maccabees 
and the Hasmonean dynasty, where an Edomite family by the name of Herod married into the royal lineage and became kings. Yet in the midst of this political unrest, Simeon and others like him waited patiently for the Lord to send his favor and the true king to their people. Through the crafty manipulations of political ambitions families, Simeon waited on God. Through the topsy-turvy ter- topsy economy of Israel, Simeon waited on God. Through the cultural transitions from Greek Hellenism to a world conquered by Romans, Simeon waited on God. The point is here, my brethren, we have to wait on God through all that we are going through as we end 2020. At the beginning of this pandemic, we need to be here waiting on God, waiting on his promises to us as his people and to individuals. Simeon was known throughout history as a devout man by being righteous, observing his divine laws, and one who reverenced God and was pious. The Bible says two things about him. First, he was waiting for the solace of Israel, and he was waiting for the Redeemer. I think we've all experienced that this world can give you limited pleasure. But only God can give you lasting pleasure. This world can give you advice, but only God can give you direction. The world can give you a high, but only God can give you joy. The world can give you consolation, but only God can put his arms around you for eternity. Simeon is waiting on this this solace that God sends. He is waiting for the truth, the way, and the light. He is waiting for the Old Testament Redeemer prophecy to move from words to flesh. He is waiting for the prophetical to become physical. He is not only waiting for solace, he is waiting for the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would fall upon people. But those of us in the New Testament age, we're not waiting for the Holy Spirit anymore to fall on us. Because we, we are filled with His Spirit. He does not need to fall or land on us. He lives in us. He does not work from the outside. He operates from within us. Those of you who know me know that I'm not up here because of who is on the outside. I am up here because of who lives within me. I do not teach and serve him because he's on the outside. I am here because he lives in me. The Holy Spirit speaks to Simeon and says that he will not see death until he has seen the Messiah. Now here's something to ponder. We know that Simeon is an elder man, but we do not know when the Holy Spirit told him he would see the Messiah. But we do know he waited for the solace of Israel and to see the Christ. Let me suggest to you that when you enter into his presence this week, that we are aware because he came in the flesh. We can be a high priest like Simeon and enter into his presence. We can live with him for eternity. We can walk in his holiness because of his sacrifice. I think too often we get used to to the change that's already occurred because We were born this way. 
But when Simeon was born, the Holy Spirit had not yet entered. The Messiah had not yet come. The Messiah had not yet sacrificed himself. But we live beyond that. And it is part of our everyday life, and I think sometimes we take it for granted. Eight days after the birth of Jesus, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple to see Simeon. As was the custom of the law, he was brought to the priest for circumcision, a symbol of the separation of the flesh, a symbol that made him a part of the Jewish race, a sign of outward grace needed to enjoy the privileges of being Jewish. Performed on the eighth day with knives, surrounded by male members of the family, performed by a priest, they would name the child. But this day was unusual. As Mary and Joseph brought the child to the temple and put the child into the arms of Simeon, Simeon praises God. Imagine the thoughts of Simeon as he held the child Jesus. How did he bless a child who would one day bless him? He had read all the Old Testament scriptures of what the Messiah was to do. He knew who he was he was holding. The Holy Spirit had told him so. He was the one that they had waited for. What he has waited for is finally resting in his arms. Another definition of favor that I found is that what we have finally waited for has arrived. This has been a rough year. I personally in my family have lost five people. Not necessarily to COVID, but I've lost five people. Never in my life have I lost five people in one year. The political turmoil of our country is by far frightening. We have seen hatred just pile out of people's mouths like never before. But we need to be like Simeon. There are are promises that our Messiah is to return to take us home. A friend of mine has said that now everything in prophecy has been completed up until the point of his second arrival. I don't know if that's true. I haven't personally studied them myself. But we need to be like Simeon. We need to be waiting in anticipation for the sound of the trumpet, for the moment that we will be with him. Many of us feel that we have felt the Holy Spirit in our hearts saying that we are going to see it. I've known since I was a child that I probably would see his return. Am I waiting in anticipation? Am I waiting and living the life that he's commanded me to in the midst of the fact that everything looks hopeless? When we enter his presence, we should be filled with exaltation. Our Redeemer is here. In addition to this week, we have been celebrating the event of the birth of our salvation and our reconciliation with the Savior. Simeon says, Lord, let me die in peace. Mine eyes have seen your salvation. He probably never saw Jesus' crucifixion, but he knew he had seen his Redeemer. Because before Jesus went to the cross, he was already his Savior. Before he marched through the streets of Jerusalem, he was already our Savior. Before he comes to take us home, he is already our Savior. He lives within our hearts. 
We can bow before him. We can go into his presence without a mediator because he died as our Savior. My brothers and sisters, if Simeon can bless God with foresight, we can praise him with hindsight. As somebody once told me, always leave them wanting more. And so, let me close. And as I close, think today that we have the ability to go directly to Him. That we have the Holy Spirit living within our lives because of His promises. And that no matter what is happening on our planet today, what is happening in our country the political turmoil, turmoil that we can still wait patiently on Him. We can still expectantly live the life that He has called us to live. Let's pray. Our Father and Lord, we thank You for all Your promises. We thank You for the promises up until yet that have been completed. We thank you for the promises yet to come. We thank you that in spite of the mess of, of the pandemic and the world and the hatred that is being spewed, that you are yet God. Fill us with your spirit today and let us live in exaltation of your great and glorious name. In Jesus' name, amen. been one of the favorites this year in the year of, of COVID and all the disruption of the country, and it is this, I am holding on to you. That's the promise we can count on. Our Lord promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth, so we can trust the God who made us to carry us on through the next year. And here we are facing a new year with the great I am leading us along. There's no space that his love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your eyes spread wide. Take In the middle of the storm
closing, my brethren, go now and live in the spirit of your baptism, even when you are led into wild and hard places. With repentance and trust, give yourself to God. And with fasting and prayer, strengthen yourselves against the ways of the tempter. And may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray, that you may keep the covenant. Go in peace, serve the Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.